Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we're gonna talk a little bit more about Samson Dauda and Milo Sharchev, more precisely about why this relationship ended and who is gonna be the next coach that Samson is gonna be working with. Now, things are not exactly super clear, but we got some information, some ideas, and I'm gonna show you a couple of interesting things, so it's gonna be a fun video. As of right now, we have no idea what the hell happened, why these guys parted ways, Milos did not answer to a single comment in his comment section, so many people were speculating, asking why, tagging Milos and asking him why, he didn't say anything, so apparently he wanna keep things quiet, he doesn't wanna say what exactly happened, also Samson, he made stories, he made different stories, you guys probably saw the one when he says that he's doing the Iron Classic UK, so he's not pulling out, he's gonna continue competing, his career is not over, he's not hospitalized or anything, he's fine, he's doing the Iron Classic UK, but he did not address the fact that he stopped working with Milos, he didn't say anything, anything, anywhere, not in the comment section, not on his stories, however, however, his boss, Fuad Abiyad, who spoke to Samson multiple times ever since this whole thing went down, ever since Samson's meltdown, he spoke to Samson, he knows exactly what occurred, but Samson is not allowing him to share it on his podcast. Yesterday, Fuad uploaded his podcast, the review of the Arnold Classic, blah blah blah, and what Samson was okay with is for Fuad to say that he is fine physically, and that's about it. That's all. As far as him parting ways with his coach, nothing, not a thing, radio silence, well, kind of, we got something, I think I can squeeze something out of what based on this podcast, I'm gonna show that to you, but basically, you know, they didn't really address anything directly, which is extremely weird, this is not normal, guys, guys, let's be real here, these guys were like the most popular coach and client duo in bodybuilding world for the past three years, Everybody has been talking how Samson's transformation was mind-blowing, how he literally had a metamorphosis, his body morphed since he started working with Milos. And Milos is, you know, probably the most outspoken coach out there, he's basically doing three podcasts a day, you can see him everywhere, you can hear him everywhere, everybody loves to listen to him, he's very knowledgeable, he was top 10 at the Mr. Olympia back when Ronnie was competing and the others during the 90s, so he's not just a coach he's a hall of famer, and now, let's say, one of the top three best coaches in the world, so when these guys parted ways, everybody, literally everybody in the bodybuilding world was asking the question, why, 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 we all wanna know, it's not something you can just ignore, I mean, you can, but it's not normal to stay silent about something like this, everybody was following these two guys, and now they're gone, it's done, just like that, Samson didn't say anything, anything, guys, which is very, very weird, and let's get into it, let's try to figure out what could have happened, so like I said, I'm sure you've seen this video of Samson's stories, where he had that uh, breakdown of his, where he was angry at his fans, at bodybuilding world, he was talking about stopping competing forever, retiring, because uh, his uh, family is being humiliated, blah, 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 and after that, very shortly after that, his relationship with Milos ended, so that is one thing, this is not Samson we know, something is off with this guy, with his hormones probably, or he's just not really handling this stress the best possible way, I mean, we have no idea what it's like to be top 3 in the world, he has a ton of pressure on his shoulders, so it's gotta be very difficult, especially when you're suffering as much as Samson did, and he did suffer, you're gonna hear exactly how much, so he suffered really bad, he's taking certain things that are gonna make you more emotional, more angry and stuff like that, we all know what I'm talking about, and so we can all be pretty sure that that is the reason why he lashed out like that. Yesterday he posted this photo in which he's smiling, he's talking about how it's a true test of characters uh, when things are not going very well, stuff like that, you know, drama, 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 they're in the comment section, everybody else, all the IBB pros are like trying to show this guy some support, to console him, to make him feel better, and that's awesome, but you know, it kind of shows that Samson is not exactly in the best spot mentally right now, and this stuff happens to most people, 
Still, you shouldn't lash out like that online, you shouldn't have breakdowns online. You should keep that with your friends, with your family, with your therapist or whoever. You don't share that stuff online. I mean, that's part of being emotionally mature. But, you know, again, the circumstances are very weird, so it happened. Anyways, like I said in Fuad's podcast, he wasn't willing to share what exactly happened, but he did spill some tea. I think it's pretty obvious that he shared this with the the other guys doing the podcast, but he probably told them not to say anything. However, they did say a little bit of something, which I think you can conclude a lot from. Let me show you. You know, he'll be like half a percent, one percent better conditioning in each show, and it's it's building up. But if he goes at that rate, he won't ever get to the condition we want to see by the time his career's over, you know? So he does need, I think he does need to change something and whether that's a change of coaching or the same coach trying something different or pushing it different. He eats zero food and does four hours of cardio and he can't get lean. It's like, well, maybe that's why you're not getting lean. So I'm sure we've all known guys that are professionals that cut corners. Sam's not one of them. Sam's is not one of those guys. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a thing that people say, oh, well, maybe he just, he doesn't know how to suffer. And I'm like, listen, the guy's suffering. Like you're talking about a 300 pound guy eating two eggs for breakfast. Yes, and, and that's what the point I'm trying to make is I think it could be, yeah, it could be. Sometimes like they're too suffering far. too much that it's, right. it's literally not what they need to be doing. All right, all right, that's a little bit of something. They speak about Samson and what he needs to change to bring better conditioning, and what they're saying basically is that his approach is not good, that he's suffering too much basically. And uh, Fuller just says that Samson has been eating two eggs for breakfast. I don't know for how long. I mean, that's that's gotta be horrible. I mean, I don't know how I would feel mental if I did that. And this guy is 300 pounds. So like I said, Fuller knows exactly what is the reason behind this decision. The other guys on the podcast know that as well, I'm sure. Ian Valier knows exactly what happened. But they just don't want to speak for Samson directly. However, they did say quite a lot. It seems like Samson stopped working with Milos. Look at his back, man. It's, it's really so much better than before. They are basically saying that Samson stopped working with Milos because he can't figure out conditioning for Samson. Which would make sense if it wasn't between two shows that are two weeks apart from each other. And if it didn't happen right after Samson had that meltdown on camera. Today, Samson posted a couple of stories as well. It seems like he is better... But he's in a weird spot right now. Let me show you what I mean exactly. You're going to find this funny, I'm sure. Yes, man. A few weeks, that's going to be me. But that's going to be us anyway. Holiday, break, vacation, chilling, by the beach, by the pool. All inclusive, all you can eat. I can't wait. So instead of being focused on Arnold Classic UK and winning that show, which he's probably going to win because Hard is most likely not doing it, he's focused on vacation. Which, I gotta say, it's totally understandable, I've been there, you guys know that I compete, I competed many many times, and I've definitely been leaner than Samson Dauda, but you know, he's a much bigger guy and he probably needs to eat less, so I don't know who suffered more, but I remember that one time when my season lasted for way too long, I didn't care about competing, I didn't care about the shows, I was doing everything, I was going through the motions, but all I wanted is a break, so I completely understand him, he competed way too many freaking times, and you know, he broke down, you can't keep going forever, man, this is too difficult, if you think you can, you're gonna realize that you cannot, so finally, Samson figured out where his breaking point is, and this, this story, yeah, I was laughing so hard when I've seen this, this guy is only focused on on resting right now and eating food and yeah yeah he's done he's fried he's mentally fried as one can get i i don't know how he's gonna pull through until the arnold classic uk hopefully he will be able to look decent at least but there is definitely a possibility of somebody else beating him if he comes in off and i don't think he's gonna be at his 100 i don't think he's gonna be improved that's for sure basically I don't know how much this guy cares about bodybuilding right now, even though, even though, if he wins the Arnold UK, he wins, like, I believe, $130,000, so that should be motivation enough for him to consider this a job and just go through the motion, even though he probably can't stop thinking about food and the rest, he can still go through it, and, you know, he's most likely gonna look good enough to win this if Hadi doesn't show up. 
So at this point, we can conclude, we can basically get a pretty good idea of why he stopped working with Milos. If we get any more concrete information, I'm gonna share it right here. So guys, please stay subscribed to this channel. Now, now, let's talk about who is gonna be Samson's new coach. Is there any information about that? Well, possibly. Possibly there is a little bit of something. Let me play this part of Fuad's podcast for you. It's like, it's like remember, remember we had John De La Rosa on? Mm-hmm. And I said to John, I'm like, you just got to get shredded, bro. And he's like, I know I'm working on it. It's like, it's not like I'm lazy, you know, but I just want, I just want to make the point that it's not a matter of laziness. Sometimes it's a matter of just having the right piece of the puzzle. Like if you look at John De La Rosa now, he starts working with Patrick. Patrick is a conditioning freak. I mean, Ian knows he worked with him for many years yeah. and all of a sudden you got the best John De La Rosa we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sometimes it's just to change a coach. All right. All right. Interesting. Could Patrick Tour be Samson's new coach? I think there are a lot of great examples of other coaches who are known for bringing guys in condition. Chris Asito, for one, he's basically the most popular conditioning coach. He brings everybody pretty much dry and shredded. Chad Nichols did wonders with Big Ramy when nobody else could. Matt Jansen has his trademark conditioning with all of his guys, like Nick Walker, Sean Clarida. However, Fuad chose... Patrick Tour, who recently had a lot of success, I gotta admit. I was the one to criticize Patrick for failing with uh, James Hollingshead, but, you know, I can see at this point that it's probably James's fault. Uh, also, Ian Valier, I mean, he stopped working with Patrick at the end of his career, but he had the most success with Patrick, and so did James, I think. Recently, Patrick Tour had great success with Hyun Pearson, with Michael the Bull, with Stanimo, with a lot of guys, and lastly, he had success, great success, with John De La Rosa. And John De La Rosa is basically a legend of the sport. He was very popular like 10 years ago. And uh, Patrick managed to bring him in his absolute best shape ever. Conditioning, size, fullness, everything. This was by far the best John De La Rosa we ever saw on a bodybuilding stage. Look at his back shot. That was really outstanding. It was comparable to Hari Japan. So, Patrick Tour knows how to bring these guys in. And what is crazy about his approach is the fact that he feeds everybody a lot of food. Literally everybody. I know a lot of guys who were trained by him. Even some guys over here from Balkans. They spoke about it in their social media. He feeds everybody like a lot of carbs. So if you guys like that approach, you can hire Patrick. He's probably going to feed you more than ever before. And he's going to bring you conditions. So he really knows how to manipulate the macros combined with training and supplements and everything. So he knows his thing. He knows how to bring the guys in. So is Samson going to choose him? Is that already done? Or is Fuad just, you know, speculating, mentioning Patrick for, you know, just an example? I don't know, it could be, it could be Patrick Tour, it could make sense. I can see a lot of comments, people speculating that it might be Honey Rambert, and I'm sure Samson would hire Honey Rambert in a heartbeat, but from what I know, Honey is not accepting everybody. He's only accepting guys who are sponsored by his company, and yeah, he accepted Chris Bumstead, because Chris Bumstead is literally the most popular person in fitness industry in the world right now, so he had no choice, basically. Also, Hani is already coaching top two guys at the Mr. Olympia. It would be too weird if he coached all top three guys, you know. So he's probably not gonna accept. Meanwhile, we have our, in my opinion, in my opinion, the most logical candidate, Chris Asito, advertising himself, posting a photo of Andrew Jack prior to Arnold Classic 2023, boasting about uh, his conditioning that Chris Asito brought. And you guys know that Andrew Jack had issues with bringing conditioning, and, you know, he never really brought it fully, but for that one show, Arnold Classic 2023, he was pretty dialed in. And you gotta admit, these two physiques are very much alike, Andrew Jack and Samson Dowd, I mean, because they're both very tall, very dark, and they both have the same problem with a lower body from behind. You know, hamstrings, uh, not really hamstrings in Samson's case, but in Andrew's, yes, but glutes. Glutes are definitely the big issue for both of these guys, and Chris Asito managed to make some solid improvements in Andrew's physique. In my opinion, overall, that was the best Andrew Jack ever. He was at his leanest, and he beat Big Ramy and Sean Clarida and a lot of other guys, and he was actually battling against these two giants, and you could make a case that he could have placed second at this show. 
On the other hand, the problem with Christian Sitok would be that you might come in a little bit too flat, you know, and, and Ander did. He was really conditioned here, but he was a little bit flatter, especially in the arms and forearms. It wasn't his biggest, fullest version, so maybe Samson wouldn't like that, but I think with Samson's shape, with his crazy long and full muscle bellies, and basically with his fullness that he always has, pretty much, I don't think I ever saw Samson flat. No matter how depleted he got, how low his foot went, I don't think he was ever flat with this size that he has now. So I think in his case, I don't think he can go wrong with Chris Asito. So in my opinion, that probably makes the most sense, but it could be Patrick Tour, based on what uh, Fuad is saying, and that also could work out very well. So I'm not against that, that could also be a good combo. But as for right now, for Arnold UK, I think he's prepping himself. Or, as he likes to say, his wife is helping him, prepping him. But, you know, his wife is not a bodybuilding coach, so, you know, it's himself prepping. I wonder what you guys think, uh, how will Samson do if he's uh, self-coaching? And uh, who do you think is gonna be his next coach? And also, why do you think he stopped working with Milos at this very moment? Just leave your comments down below, I'm really curious to hear what you think, and also like this video if you enjoyed it, I mean, and if you wanna see more content about bodybuilding like this, guys, please, just subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.